Hello everyone, myself Farvahita, Assistant Professor of Computer Science Department from Rohini College of Engineering and Technology. I am here to discuss a few topics in the subject CS8592 Object Oriented Analysis and Design. Here we are going to discuss about the unified process. The objective of learning this is to understand about unified process. So unified process combines commonly accepted best practices such as iterative life cycle and risk driven development into a cohesive and well documented process description. So when we consider about a software development process, it describes an approach to build, deploy and possibly maintain the software. And this UP that is unified process has three reasons that is this unified process is an iterative process, unified process practices provide an example structure for how to do and thus how to explain the OAD that is object oriented analysis and design. The unified process is flexible and can be applied in a lightweight and agile approach that includes the practices from other agile methods. Iterative and evolutionary development. A key practice in both the UP that is unified process and most other met modern methods is iterative development. In this life cycle approach, the development is organized into a series of short fixed length that is maybe of three weeks, mini projects called iterations. The outcome of each is a tested, integrated and executable partial system. Each in iteration includes its own requirements, analysis, design, implementation and testing activities. The system grows incrementally over time iteration by iteration and thus this approach is also known as iterative and incremental development because feedback and adaption evolve the specification and design it is also known as iterative and evolutionary development. Considering about the benefits of iterative development, the first one is it is less project failure, better productivity and lower defect rates and this is shown by research into iterative and evolutionary methods. Early rather than late mitigation of high risk that is technical requirements, objectives, usability and so forth. Early visible progress, early feedback, user engagement and adaption leading to a refined system that other closely means the real needs of the stakeholders manage complexity, the team is not overwhelmed by analysis paralysis or very long and complex steps. The learning within an iteration and can be methodically used to improve the development process itself iteration by iteration. Let us see about the need for feedback and adaptation. In complex, the changing systems, feedback and adaptation are key ingredients for success. The feedback from early development, programmers trying to read the specification and client demos to refine the requirements. The feedback from test and developers to refine the design or models. Feedback from the progress of the team tackling early fe features to refine the schedule and estimates. Feedback from the client and marketplace to reprioritize the features to tackle in the next iteration. Now let us see about risk driven and client driven iterative planning. The unified process encourages a combination of risk driven and client driven iterative planning. This means that the goals of early iteration are chosen to identify and drive out the highest risk. The second one is the, to build the visible features that the client cares most about. The risk driven iterative development also includes more Specifically, the practice of architecture centric iterative development that is early iteration focus on building, testing and stabilizing the core architecture. The unified phases, unified process phases. The unified process project organizes the work and iterations across four major phases that is inception, elaboration, construction and transition. Inception is approximate vision, business case, scope, vague estimates. Elaboration is refined vision, 
iterative implementation of the core architecture, resolution of high risk, identification of most requirements and scope, more realistic estimates. Then construction is iterative implementation of the remaining lower risk and easier elements and preparation for deployment. Transition is beta test deployment. This is not the old waterfall model or sequential life cycle of first defining all the requirements and then doing almost all the design. Inception is not the requirement phase, rather it is a feasibility phase where the investigation is done to support a decision to continue or stop. Similarly, the elaboration is a phase where the core architecture is iteratively implemented and high risk issues are mitigated. So consider this diagram, it shows the inception elaboration phase, construction phase and transition phase. In this elaboration phase which shows the iteration which has a milestone and iteration end point when some significant decision or evaluation occurs and consider a stable executable subset of the final product. The end of each iteration is a minor release. In the case of increment, the difference that is delta between the releases of two subsequent iterations and finally in the transition phase that is a final production release, at this point the system is released for production use. Then let us see about e UP disciplines. The disciplines is a set of activities and related artifacts in one subject area such as the activities within the requirement analysis. In the unified process, an artifact is the general term for any pro work product, code, web graphics, database schema, text documents, diagrams, models and so on. There are several disciplines in the unified process which is depicted in this diagram. This diagram shows the relationship between the disciplines and phases. These are the questions related to this topic and thank you.